here? Are we ready to go? Are we online? Are we here? Are we all here? We are here. Hello, everyone, one and all. Welcome back to the KAV Bot podcast. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, just clapping by myself in the flat. Thank you so much for coming back and listening to this episode. Today is going to be very brief, almost. Um, we're going to be just reviewing um, all the bars in the in Newtown, Edinburgh. Um, but um, just before we, we start off, just have a look, little look in the description there. You can see some timestamps just to uh, make sure that you're not going through all of my shite chat. Although today is going to be a very brief one. I don't think this is going to pass 45 minutes at all. He says when we upload it, it'll be two hours. Um, but yeah, just check the description, timestamps. Um, and just skip ahead to the the bit talking about bars essentially. Um, but how have you all been doing? I hope you've all been doing very well. Have you been catching up on Duncan and his adventures in Gorgi the last few weeks? Um, those have been the biggest hit on YouTube that I've had so far. Um, so we will be doing some more stuff with Duncan um, around Gorgi because Gorgi is um, a dystopian nightmare, shall we say. Um, but anyway, as you all know, we will be talking about the the bars in Newtown in Edinburgh today, and we will be rating them. And soon I will put up the tier list that we've created for this. But if you are a fan of the show, and I say fan very loosely, as in you tolerate, I say tolerate loosely, you are aware of the show. We do start every show with a beer. And today we are going to be drinking the American Hopped podcast dry gate beer from glasgow 7.2 percent it's quite strong so it's called podcast beer perfect beer for a podcast hey let's open this up let's smell it it smells like beer shit the bed okay let's just that's not the beer that's just me having a piss um oh it's quite flat it's weird so we're going to be drinking this whilst we rate these pubs. Pubs? Pubs. Um, I've just finished work. I literally just closed the laptop and I've opened up a new one. Um, it is Friday right now. Obviously, this won't be out for a couple of days because I, I'm i not very good at uploading things. <laughs> I'm just not very good with technology because I'm old. Um, but just quickly, I just want to talk about the podcast itself and what I'm thinking of doing just for one minute. Um, so we're coming up to the 10th of October soon, which will be the anniversary of the podcast. Um, and I will be changing things up of what to do with the podcast itself and the channel. Um, this was ultimately set up as a an escape out of lockdown and being locked inside and just all that, all that jazz. But I don't want to stop doing it. This is why I've not been uploading so much. It's just because I don't have much to speak about. I could talk about current events, but I really don't think anyone wants to hear that. No one wants to hear me speak all the time. It's not really something I want to do moving forward. So at the 10th of October, we're going to have an anniversary special where we're going to talk about um, what we're going to do in the future. And also there's going to be some things we're going to put involved with that. Um, so get involved the 10th of October. Uh, big episodes coming out then. But let's get into the juice. Let's drink some juice. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's, um, well, that's interesting, that one. Oh, oh, it was vegan. Well, great. Uh, now I definitely, we're going to rate that out of 69 at the end as well, if you don't know. Um, but let's, let's just go straight into why we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to rate some Edinburgh Newtown bars. That's right. We are here to give our opinions on the bars. Let's let's load up the screen right now. Okay, so we should be able to see the screen. So if you just look on the on the video, you'll see on the screen in front of you our tier list. Um and I made this myself. Thank you. I, I I did. I made this myself. So you can see here at the bottom, we've got all the bars. Uh, I've included 
all the bars which I've attended, I've been there in one capacity or another, except for one bar, one bar, and I'm going to let you guess which one it is. I will tell you, obviously. Um, and if you don't know what a tier list is, basically the tier list is we um, put a ranking, as you can see on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side here, you've got guy bodies at the top, which um, we will find out. Banger, that'll be like a top night out. So banger is the bang night out. That's the best night you can have, in my opinion. And then A, B, C, so your classic school grading. So A, A, A tier is good. B tier is like, okay, it's not bad. C tier is like, uh, but doable. Dangerous is you'll probably get killed if you go there. F is just not a good place. And then shite night is just never go to this place ever. That's what I'm looking at, okay? Um, and we're going to completely car in this. We're going to be looking at things, looking at these places um, based on venue. So do I like the place? Do I think it's too big? Do I think it's too small? What do I think of it? Um, the staff, you know, the staff... And I'm not going to be personally attacking anyone, but you know, I'll be looking at more like the vibe of the staff. Like, are the staff having a good time when they're working? Are they are they hating their lives as most of us, all of us, are, are when working in bars? Um, the clientele, what kind of the general clientele you get in these places? Are they ones which I'm suited to, or do I think it's like a different group? Um, the drinks themselves and the prices, you know, are they expensive? Is it cheap? Are the drinks good? Are they bad? What do I think? And then also things such as the music and any other kind of, just basically a general vibe of what I think. And you have to remember, this is my opinion only, okay? This is only me. I'm just giving you my opinion. I don't give a fuck what you think. I don't give a fuck that you're upset that I think that your favorite bar is in C tier or F tier or shite night. I don't give a fuck, okay? It's just my opinion. Um, and also, I know some of you might be upset. I might put some bars that you hate in the top tiers. But you just have to fucking deal with it, okay? I, I like these bars. Um, but with um, we always have to put on... Oh, Jesus Christ. That's way too loud. Okay. We're going to put on the the non-copyright music to give it a little bit of tension. You know what I mean? Because this is a tense moment. I could get barred if any of the owners or managers see of this from all these bars. I'm probably barred already from all of these bars. So it's all good. But let's just, it's enough talking. Let's just, just, let's just jump into it, okay? So, as I said, I think there's 52 bars. We're just going to go straight into it. The first bar we have... I can't see, fuck. <laughs> the Black Cat. Okay, the Black Cat. So the Black Cat is on Rose Street. Um, it's a little whiskey bar on Rose Street. I used to go there quite a lot. Um, after work, when I worked at TJ Friday, this beer is horrible. What the fuck is wrong with this? It's got vanilla. Okay, it's vanilla. Okay, well, all right. We'll drink it. Might have a whiskey. Anyway, the Black Cat. So I used to go there after TJ Fridays. Nice, warm pub. Got kind of a cool vibe to it with the the whiskey. They have the flight of the whiskey, so you do like five flights of whiskey for like twenty pounds. It's quite cheap. But it is quite small. So. And right now, I think it's got a lot more touristy, which I'm not liking. So, in that fact, I would have put it on as a B tier before, but I'm going to put it as a C. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to go there for a pint. And, and the, the staff are great there. I love the staff there. They're all great. But it's just too touristy. It's too small. I mean, the toilets are a joke. You literally have to piss with the door open because I, I'm six foot two and I've got to piss the door because they're so small. It's such a small bar. But you do get some good whiskeys there. It'll be a high... I'll put it as a high C. A high C. Next one. Lucky Liquor. By the way, let me know down in the, the comments or just anything. Just let me know, you know, if you disagree or like any of these bars. I think they should be hired or lower rated. Lucky Liquor. This is um, 
This is more of my vibe, Lucky Liquor. Um, it's, again, it's, it's a, a very small bar, but it's got like a little bit more of a, a wank to it. <laughs> what I mean a wank as in, it's, it's interesting. I like, I like the kind of style of it. It's, it's mid-tier price. The staff are very knowledgeable. I, I've only spent a couple of times there, so I don't know it too well, unlike the Black Cat. So objectively, I can't give it a full-scale um, rating, but I'm going to put it in a, a B-tier. Now, I'm going to put it as a low B-tier, because I, I feel bad for the Black Cat. I would say it's on par with the Black Cat. Let's, let's put it as a... Let's put it on par with Black Cat. I do think Black Cat is better than Lucky Liquor. But I think Lucky Liquor has a lot more of a... Um, it's, it's a different vibe than Black Cat, definitely. But these are not terrible bars. I think they're, they're, they're cool bars, but they just have things which... I can't vibe too much of what's that one. Oh, I know this one. Well, I have to. I, I made this fucking list, so of course I'm going. Next one. 99 Hanover Street. Ooh, 99. Now called Super Rico, if you don't know. So it's been updated to Super Rico. I think the owner has sold it. 99, back in the day, five years ago, was the king, the king of a Sunday night. Actually, weekends, you go there. If you worked in hospitality, oh, it was fantastic. You went in there. So I remember I had so many good memories going in there on a Sunday night great DJ on, everyone works in hospitality, they all finish work, they go there till one o'clock at night, it was busy, it was rammed, everyone knew each other, great vibes. Now, they obviously sold, um, I think it was owned by Gareth Woods, they sold it on to the new owners, Juan and Vanessa, they, those guys are great. Um, it did lose its touch, I think, and I'm gonna be honest, it was because Gareth would basically was like, didn't give a fuck about charging people. He would give people free drinks. Obviously, Juan and Vanessa come in, they need to make money. You know, it's, it's a business, and understandably, you know, they had to start charging people for drinks. They still did, they didn't lose the Sunday vibe as much, I think, but it's, it did lose that kind of party atmosphere. Um, <sighs> 99 is a beautiful building. The, the bartenders are great. I'm going to put 99 as an A. Back in the day, it was a banger. 100% a banger. I'm going to put it as an A. Super Rico, I've been there once. It, it looks cool. It does look very cool. It's kind of got my vibe. I think people that go there are my age. and There's a hot, lot of hot girls, but <laughs> who cares about that? I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. Sorry. It's not as intense as I want it to be. More intense. Okay. So 99 A tier. It could have been a banger, but it's an A tier. What's this? That's El Barrio. Oh shit, El Barrio. El Barrio. Hmm. This is the first of like the late night bars. Um, El Barrio. The thing with El Barrio, really, it gives me the kind of vibe of like, it's somewhere where you think the new Narcos season is going to be filmed. You know, you've, you've had like Narcos Colombia, you've had Narcos Mexico. The next one is Narcos El Barrio. I, I, I just, it, it's a weird place. It's very, and I get it, it is a Spanish bar, it is, um, is it Spanish? I don't even know. Is it Mexican Spanish? I just feel like one day I'll be sitting in there having a pint and you know, a couple of guys could come in, shoot up the place. Twelve people are going to be dead, and then I'm going to be sitting there with my pint, drinking it, bodies and blood everywhere. And then all of a sudden, the Narcos theme tune just comes on. You know. And then I'll finish my pint. That, that, that's literally that's literally it. It's literally El Barrio for me. So it's dangerous. I think it's, it's fluttering and dangerous. Or B tier. B, I think it is B tier. And I, I hate to put it above like that, but... The drinks are cheap. The music's actually really good. It's salsa music. You can dance to it. 
I'm putting in B tier. I'm putting in B tier. I'm sorry. I'm putting in B tier. Yes, you might get syphilis when you go in there, but I'm putting in B tier. Next one, Panda and Sons. Ooh, Panda and Sons. Panda and Sons. I've been there once. Been there once. Um, good bar. Knowledgeable staff, which I'm not gonna comment on really. The vibe is again quite wanky. It's got this kind of wanky hipster vibe. I'm not gonna put hipster, but. Um, Panda and Sons, Panda and Sons. I think they're a little bit too pretentious, maybe. The venue is, as it is a speakeasy, so it's quite hidden, but it is literally, you have to go like a little bit off George Street, which is not an inconvenience. But it's not somewhere for me, like I do like to just go somewhere and be like, let's go to this place for a couple of beers or whatever. That's not the place I go to. You go there as a plan, which is not a bad thing. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a low B tier. I'm gonna put it below El Barrio's because I don't mind the murder in El Barrio. <laughs> What's this? What's this place? Is that the Alexander? That's the, that's the Weatherspoons. That's the Alexander Graham Bell. Yes, I did make this tier list. I do know it. Um. Alex on the grain bell. Now you might be going, oh, boo, weather spoons. Yeah. There is two weather spoons in this one. Alex on the grain bell. I don't want to put it in the same category as these two. Fuck. I'm going to put it in F. Now, I'm not going to say it's. Uh, see, the thing is, though, the thing, the thing with weather spoons is, it's cheap drinks, man. The clientele are your young kids who are 16 and your older folk who just want to have a day out or a night out. But, nah, it's go, it goes in F tier, fuck it. I, 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 I'll comment on the weather spoons more of the standing order. Fierce beer. Fierce beer is going to go to C. I've been there a couple of times. Again, kind of, I think the vibe of the, the Rose Street bars is it's quite small. The beers are good. I think the layout of it is a little bit complicated. It's such a small space, but it's quite complicated. The beers, even though it's a fierce beer, I've had a couple of them on the podcast, actually. I'm not, not liking them. I'm not liking this. Fuck, this vanilla is just too much. Oh. Um... But it's it's okay. Like you can go there for a pint with the boys. But I don't think it's 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 not in competition with these two. To be honest, I'm gonna move I'm gonna move Black Cat up here, and Lucky Liquor. And I'm gonna put Lucky, Black Cat in front of it. It's not. Oh, let me do it. Right. Yeah, these two can compete with each other. So this B tier, C tier is fierce. Cool. Sorted. Next one. What's that? I can't see the Huxley. The Huxley's just not my vibe. It's it's just not my vibe, man. Um, it's a nice bar. Um, I'll put it above Fierce. It's a nice bar. It's a small bar, but it's kind of it is a very kind of I think of it as a wine and dine place. You got the Rutland upstairs steak. Uh, you would you don't go to the Huxley for a good night out. You go there for a nice, which is nothing wrong with that. But it's just not my vibe. It's kind of a little bit more highbrow. I like to go in jeans, and t-shirt, shots of bourbon, and a beer. Okay, it's my opinion. Shoot me down if you want. I don't care. Next, Shanwicks. Right, Shanwicks. Fucking Shanwicks. Um, I've only been in this place once before for a pint. Um, and let me tell you about Shanwicks here. Okay. It's, I think, I, I'm going to put this, and this is the category I've made this for. I'm going to put it in Dangerous, okay? I'm going to put it in Dangerous. It is Shamwix, this one, yeah. Shamwix is going to go in Dangerous because Shamwix, I hear so many stories about Shamwix from everyone, um, from my friends. Um, you know, they're saying that you know, they, they weren't allowed in because of the color of the skin. <laughs> I'm not joking, okay? And this is a bar literally on the main street of Edinburgh, the main street, Pinch Street. You've got Pinter Street and Royal Mile adjacent to each other. Pinter Street, it's 
10 meters off it it's 10 meters off it and there's racism there from what i've heard um you hear about knife crime there all the fucking time like shanwix for me is like the only place in edinburgh newtown edinburgh where you could literally go in there on a sunday afternoon and you'd be dressed up in full kevlar fucking chainmail six bodyguards around you and you would still manage to get your organs harvested by some Ned in the fucking corner. It's the only, only, only place I've ever seen where the bouncers have metal detectors on them. Like they have these portable metal detectors. Um, I went in there once for a pint and I actually, I wasn't scared, but it was just like the clientele are just a fucking joke. So dangerous is going to be Shanwix. Shanwix is in dangerous, okay? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's good. Okay, next one. Gary Baldies, there we go. We can put him up there. There we go. Gary Baldies, if I mean, is legendary in my circle. And when I say my circle, in circles I'm involved in. I don't have my own circle. I do, but less about that. Gary Baldies is um, infamous and famous at the same time. Um, you, you, you can go to Gary Baldi's and people watch and it'll be an entertainment. You don't have to drink. You can go there, have a glass of water and you can just see the shit that goes on there. It's hilarious. Um, it, it, for me, I mean, it, it kind of ticks those little boxes there. It's, it's a dive bar, which I love about it. You go there, you get shots, you get a beer. Okay, the prices are a little bit extortionate, but it's worth it just for the entertainment. They've got a fucking stripper pole. It's tiny the place but they pack it out i think the other capacity is 150 but they always put like 250 people in there so you can't move um there's a plethora of people that used to go there it's definitely changed now more of a student vibe here um and you know <laughs> basically despite everything i've seen in gary's like the fights the rapes the drugs the murders the blood people fucking on the tables DJ playing the same fucking Despacito song 30 times in a row. The F1 driver I met, Jensen Button. Snail trails on the fucking stripper pole. I think Gary Bollies can be summed up on this one story I've got. So once I was standing outside Gary Bollies, right? Just standing outside. And I saw a guy come up the stairs. He was pretty blurred. And there was a bus at the bus stop, just which is just outside Gary Bollies. And I just stopped you up. <laughs> The engine's running. And this guy comes out, shirt tucked out and everything. He sees the bus. And he goes up to the bus. And he, he goes up to the window and he starts patting it. He goes, easy boy, easy. And he starts feeding it carrots. You know, he starts feeding it carrots. He thought it was a fucking horse. That's what Gary Baldi's does to you, okay? That is exactly what it does to you. It makes you think that a fucking Lothian bus, the number 27, is a horse. Now, I stole that, I stole that uh, uh, story from Chael Sonnen, okay? It's not a true story, but I thought that would be a great example of what Gary Bolly does to you. Uh, so Gary, Gary Bolly goes into Gary Bolly's category. No doubt about it. Next one. Uh, Elios. Elios. This is one of my, uh, I'll say, locals. I, I go there quite a lot. I've done a shift there actually. Um, hmm. Elios, Elios, Elios. If it was Elios when it was before, the pre Elios was Mad Dogs, it would go in F. Mad Dogs was a rundown, horrible bar. It still has the same clientele, although no, it doesn't actually. It's got some members of the same clientele. But now. I'm going to be honest, I do go to Elio's, and the reason why I go there is because I actually do have fun, so I'm going to put it in A. I'm not going to put it in Banger. Um, I'm going to put it in A with 99, because these are two of my favourite bars in Edinburgh. Um, the reason why, you know, I, I see people there that, you know, I, I know. The drinks are actually, you know, aren't too bad. They're actually quite reasonable priced clientele that it definitely changed over time um and yeah, it's a good it's a right night it's an okay night and also the uber is perfect it just picks you up straight outside the door perfect right this is one 
Amaroni. Or from one Italian to the next. Hey, JP. <laughs> um, right, Amaroni. Um, Shy night. <laughs> Simple. It's not my vibe. It's just really not my vibe. I don't give a fuck. It's just too kind of highbrow, too kind of boring. You're not going to do anything in Amaroni. You know, don't, don't come up to me and say, oh, do you want to go to Amaroni for a drink? No, no I don't. Do you want to go for a, a, a dinner? No. I like burgers, chips, and fucking... Give me some good food. And when I say good food, I mean I eat well during the week. So if I'm going to go eat out, I want to eat some fat shit. I want to eat some fucking fries. I want some burgers. I want some nachos. I want some chicken wings. Don't give me Amaroni shit. I'm sorry, I'm talking about food right now. But Amaroni, no, shite night. Next one, Grand Crew. Oh, the first one of the bars that I used to work in full time. Grand Crew. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so Grand Crew. I used to love Grand Crew. I absolutely adored it, actually. Uh, again, kind of in the same region as 99 uh, five years ago. Uh, it was like the ultimate night to go at, you know, one till three o'clock at night. You go to Grand Crew, cheap to drink, cheap, cheap to drink, cheap drinks. Everyone was there. Everyone was young, good looking. Um, definitely on Hanover Street. That was the place to go. It has gone down a little bit recently, obviously. I think due to some circumstances with the bar itself. I do enjoy going to Grand Crew still now. I think I'm still barred from there, but I still do enjoy going there. I, I love everyone that works there still. Um, and a lot of people still work there that I work with myself, and I do like everyone there. Um, the, the place is a bit of... It's declining. It's a bit of a shithole. Like Barnapoli, I don't know if any of you know, but Barnapoli, you should never eat there. It is literally the worst shit food. Don't ever eat at Barnapoli. Trust me, if you want salmonella, go to Barnapoli. Other than that, don't eat there. And, but anyway, it's not Grand Cru. Well, the same. I'm going to put Grand Cru... I do like going there, so I'm going to put it as a high B. High B. I like the people there. I, I've got a lot of good friends there. I'm going to put it B because it's because they work there. If, it was, if I didn't like the people there, it would be a low C. But it's a high B. I like the people there. Old hundred, shite night. Even shiter than Amrome. Yeah, shite. I've been to Old Hundred once, and it was literally going into a William Hill shop. It was just like two old boys in the corner who were talking about football back in the nineteen sixties, and they charged me like seven quid for a pint of fucking I don't know water or something. It was ridiculous. It's just not my vibe. No. Get it out of here. I am not interested. I think it's because it's on Rose Street, so they get a lot more tourists. God, why do I keep drinking this beer? It's disgusting. Because it's the podcast. We have to rate it. Have a guess what I'm going to rate this beer out of 69. It's going really well. Yeah, that's no right aftertaste. Anyway, okay. Lulu's. One of the first premium nightclubs in Edinburgh. Lulu's to me is actually... I would say, like, if you, I mean, you think about Lulu's Shanghai, why not? bourbon. I would say Lulu's is the better one out of all of them, but it's still a nightclub. I'm going to put it as a high C uh, because I Lulu's used to be quite good with Dirty Sexy, had like the good nights on there, and yes, it's expensive to go there, but it, it just kind of it's not too big, it's not too small, it's kind of quite intimate and the music's quite good as well. Uh, so I'm going to put it as a high C because the other nightclubs are just incomparable to that. I, I would say, I don't know. I, um, I only been to Lu I've been to lose the most out of, I think, the other ones. Well, Shanghai used to work there, but not work in Shanghai, but upstairs. Okay, all bar one. Ah, uh, all bar one, all bar one. All bar one, I've been a couple of times due to, I, I guess, just kind of passing by because we knew the staff. The staff there were great. Um, I mean, well, obviously you get, you get staff. I mean, there's cunts everywhere. There's cunts in every bar. I can I can name cunts in every single of these bars. But um, again, it's not my kind of. I wouldn't go. Hey, you want to go to all by one for a pint? But I guess if you're passing by, you would. I'm gonna put it as a low. C. I'm gonna put it above. 
put it above Huxley. I'll put it here, Lucky Licker, uh, uh, Panda and Sons. I prefer over Panda and Sons. Hmm, Panda and Sons can... Right, we're going to swap Panda and Sons. We'll put it above Lulu's. Oba 1 can go just a low B, a low B, because I, I don't mind it. You can go there, you can get a nice pint. It's just not my kind of crowd. Not my kind of crowd, not my kind of vibe. Nightcap. Hmm. If anyone don't know, this is the speakeasy on York Place. And um, this will be our first banger. Nightcap is a complete banger. This is my kind of vibe. Fucking amazing bar. They've got it right, every, everything. I, I know they've kind of had some trouble with it. But Nightcap for me is just perfect. It's a beautiful bar setting. It's very intimate, but it's also got a lot of space downstairs. I remember when they first opened up, you get some chicken wings at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Their drinks are amazing. They do beer and bourbon, or they did do beer and bourbon for £6, I think. Amazing place. Amazing place to go. Get involved. Go to Nightcap. Um, I actually have a story of Nightcap where I remember I took two months off drinking. I just decided to get fit. and I was doing, I was just like a, I was 27, 28. Um, I took two months drinking and it came up to my birthday in October. Um, and I was there on a Saturday night and my, my birthday was on the Sunday. But it turned midnight and I thought, well, fuck it, I'll have my first drink in a nightcap. I got an old fashioned. And it may have been my withdrawal of alcohol, but that old fashioned was one of the best old fashions I've ever tasted from nightcap. Always have a good night there. Banger of night. And I mean banger as in it doesn't have to be like loud music and fucking making out with girls everywhere. Always walk away from nightcap feeling like I've had a good night. Wally Doug, fucking F tier, F tier. Shite bar. I used to live next to this pub. It's, it's on Northumberland Street. It's just down um, Dundas Street. I used to live right next to this pub. It's literally just a fucking shithole. Uh, it's it's not worth your time. I don't even know what the price is. I went in there twice. It's 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 full of those kind of Edinburgh toff wanks. They, they love going there because they all live in Newtown, and that part of Newtown where they all got like, expensive houses or the townhouses. So they go in there, they've got their shit shirts, their fucking shit shirts open, very, a lot of pastel colours, you see. But yeah, F tier. I would say shite night, but... No, that's a bit of shite night. Uh, it's not as bad as old hundreds, and I'm already, no, it's not, okay. It's bad, but it's, it, it's fucking shit, but it's not shite night shit. PDT, PDT, please don't tell. What are they not fucking telling you? That's what I want to know, is please don't tell. Whew. This is going to be in A tier. The reason why I put it there is not because I know the owners and I'm being biased. Um, I think it's actually quite an interesting place. Um, for me, it works <laughs> in that it's, it's got... The music's too loud. I, I'll definitely give it that. Um... And the clientele are quite young. Actually, you know what? They're client. I'm going to put it as a, I'm going to put it as a B tier, high B tier. So the clientele are quite young. Um, the music's too loud, but it's interesting. You've got all the games there. You can play. The the, the alcohol, the, the beers are actually quite cheap. Uh, well, for, I don't know if they give me discount. I don't think they do. But um, I like that. It's just a little bit kind of out there. It's just kind of a fucking free for all. I like the toilets open straight up, so you can see a guy's dick of his hand when he's taking a piss. I love that. I love that. I love the anarchy. Great dance floor, fucking stripper poles everywhere. What what can you not love about this place? And also, they'll try to drug you when you're trying to get drinks. Joking, that was joking. Brewdog, Lothian Road. This is the furthest out we're getting from Newtown. It's not even Newtown, it's Lothian Road. I'm gonna put Lothian Road, Brewdog as a high B. I'm gonna put it up. Put it below ground crew. Brew Dog basically saved me during lockdown uh, for getting pints. We go there for takeaway pints. It's not a place I think you would stay there all night, but it's good to kind of start the night off in Brew Dog. You go to Brew Dog, you get yourself a Lost, you get yourself an IPA, you get yourself a, a Punk IPA. All the boys know, you know, if you're listening to this, Ron, Joe, Jack, Little John, Mark, Dad, Michael, Michael. I've got, a, I've got a, I've got a, someone. I've got a new friend now called Michael. Michael, if you're listening to this, my friend. If you live in Edinburgh, get down to Brewdog. Have, we'll have a couple of pints, talk about our lives. 
it's a good place to go. It's a good place to start. Um, the, the staff there are great. Um, it's kind of got that vibe to it where you you you, you feel comfortable. It's comfortable there. I like that about it. All right, this is the only bar I've not been to, and I promise I've never been to this place. But it's uh, it's Fantasy Palace. That's the now the reason why I put this in is I've never been there. I think it's actually closed now, but I've never actually fucking been there before. And I promise I've never been to a strip club in Edinburgh before. I promise you. I promise you. He's lying. No, I promise you. Um, so Fantasy Palace is um, put. I put it here because I just like the audacity of again uh, with Shanwicks. You have the main street in Edinburgh, Prince's Street. And this is literally at the end of it. Like, literally, you walk 20 metres and you've got Fantasy Palace. I just love the idea of, like, you know, some old woman, she's out doing her shopping, she's going to fucking... So this is on the same street, by the way. You've got... She's got, got the bank there. She's got the Bank of Scotland. She gets her money out. She goes into Sainsbury's, gets her groceries. She goes into Specsavers, right next door. Gets her eyes checked, gets her glasses checked. And she goes next door, and it's the Holland Bar. You get all her vitamins, get all her, you know, get all her little fish oils and everything. And then she comes outside, and then you see ass and titties, Fantasy Palace. I love that about that place. So for me, that is going in banger. It's going in banger. It's going in banger. It's going in fucking banger. I've never been there, but it's going there. It's a banger because you could probably get banged as well. Um, anyway, moving swiftly on. This is taking too long. Fuck. Okay, let's go. The Shack. The Shack. Rose Street Bar again. What's the pub? It's a nightclub. If you don't know what this is, this is kind of like a 70s, kind of fancy dress themed nightclub. Um, I've been there a couple of times. The general vibe, it's a more of an older crowd. I don't think I would go there unless I'm really, really drunk um, for a dance. Um, the Shack kind of gives me... It gives me the kind of idea of like you just you go in there you get like a, a, a blue WKD that you know that's kind of what they serve, um, and as I said it's like more of like a, a middle aged crowd that goes there a little fancy dress and you just kind of looking around you look at the dance floor and then you just have like a a chance encounter of seeing your dad's on the dance floor with this like big fucking black afro wig on big sunglasses and he's in the corner of the dance floor and he's just fingering your chemistry teacher from school on the fucking dance floor and whilst he's doing it he's just kind of staring you in the eyes whilst he's doing it you know he's not giving a fuck he's just strumming away to the Bee Gees on your chemistry teacher and that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from it so it's a little bit creepy um, but I do like it's kind of out there um, I need to I need to do it higher than the Lulu's um, it's higher than Bar one I think um, Lucky Liquor yes Black Cat no the shack's gonna go as a B. I'm being quite generous here, I think. Eastside, Eastside, new place. I like Eastside. Eastside's gonna get a high rating for me, and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna put it up in A. Uh, I'll put it below Elio's, um, but it's one of my favorite bars. So before you had Opal Lounge, which was a decaying nightclub. It was okay back in the day. I remember going to Opal Lounge in 2012. Yes, I'm that old kid. Yes, yeah, sit down. <laughs> He's been alive since the 80s. Um, so I went there in 2012, and it was actually quite a good night. You go in there, again, it was kind of hospitality-based. And then it just went downhill. No one wanted to go there. I think they've kind of really given it like a good, fresh look now. Um, but the reason why... I smell something burning. Did I leave the... I don't fucking know. Okay, well, shit, shit happens. My flat burns down. Um... So, east sides, um, what was I thinking? So they give this sort of whole new look to it. I've lost my track, track, track thought. Um, two seconds, let me think. East side, east side, okay. Yes, yeah, so east sides have, um, oh, so they, they, they have this whole new look to it. And the reason why I like it so much is because, what does that go away? Um, that, the bartenders there are amazing. I don't mean by their service. I don't mean by that they're, they're the best flair bartenders or whatever. It's just the vibe they give. And the whole place has a really cool kind of atmosphere there. They have like a cool DJ. The music's kind of more R&B based. Um, it's got like a, an open area so you can dance if you want to, but it's mostly sitting down. That's my kind of vibe. Open till three. The drinks are quite cheap. The bartenders look like they're having a fucking great time. It may take a little bit longer to serve you, 
but they're getting you involved. You're doing some shots with them. It's great fun. I don't know the bartenders, but I'll go in there and they'll have a conversation with you. I fucking love that. That's what I love about bartending is creating that atmosphere. So yes, Eastside gets a high rating from me. What's this one? Dirty decks. Dirty decks. That's what they call my uh, thing. Uh, I'm going to put Dirty decks in a... Uh, I'm going to put it higher than Fierce Beer. I'm going to put it in... Higher than Huxley. Put it here. Dirty decks gets a high C. Oh, middle C, sorry. Um, it's... It's okay bar. It's kind of the typical Rose Street bar. A bit touristy, but... It's not too bad. It's quite nice inside. It's quite pretty inside. So I like that. Um, so we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there for that one. <laughs> Genting Casino. Um, oh. Genting Casino. Where are we going to put Genting? Oh, we could put this anywhere. Well, I'm going to put it in Dangerous. We can't see the whole tier list, sorry. It's going to go in Dangerous. I can smell something burning. See if this flat goes on fire. See if this like middle podcast actually just cuts off. I'm dead, okay? It could be my sense. It could be a corona. Okay. So, Jenny Casino. Uh, I love this casino. I fucking love this casino. But it is dangerous. And I don't mean in physicality-wise. Although it could be. I mean, as in, you could go there uh, and lose your life savings, your mortgage, your... <laughs> Your, your life uh, to this casino um, but what I do love about this is I'm going to put it in Dangerous for that point but I would say if it was out of Dangerous it would be up in A, B, B tier because what I love about it is it's just it's just someone's living room if you've been to this casino you think of a typical casino people think of like Las Vegas or something but think of a British casino it's like very open plan it's very kind of lavish if you think of Fountain Park for example it's big, open, lavish there's machines, there's like a restaurant, there's a bar, there's TVs. They have exactly this, the same setup, except it's condensed down to a scale to about 100. It's literally someone's living room, and they're like, oh, fuck it, we'll just put a casino in there. So they just put like a couple of you know, blackjack tables and some roulette. Um, and that's what I love about it. It's literally just someone just opened up their house and said, let's put a fucking casino in. Um, but word of warning don't ever go in the casino during the daytime because that is the most depressing casinos don't have windows for good reason because they don't want you to understand when it's daylight or the time that's why they don't have clocks or windows they just lock you in essentially but what you should do if you're feeling depressed go down to a casino go down to this casino particularly into York Place Casino over here and go during the daytime, like in between four or six o'clock, maybe even three, go in like after lunch and just see the most depressing people in there. I'll probably be in there as well, but and what it reminds me of, it kind of reminds me of if you go to Edinburgh Zoo and you see like the, the lions or the leopards or the jaguars in these like small enclosures, and you've got like a tiny window which you can see them in. You can tell they're depressed, they're depressed as fuck. But you know that they're probably, if you let them outside, they're gonna either kill themselves or die because, you know, what else is there for them? Um, and that's kind of the casino vibes I get. A little bit depressing, you know, but basically, next time you go in there, just go up to someone and say, hey, maybe you should kill yourself, save yourself some money. <laughs> Advice by Kelvin. Okay, let's move on. Come on, it's taking too long. What's this? Hawksmoor? Is that Hawksmoor? That's Hawksmoor. Hawksmoor, shite night. It's going, it's going at the bottom of the bottom. The reason why, um, I might call me bitter. I've been there once. I went there once for a job interview. Um, and actually, you know what? The bar looks okay. It looks a bit kind of like a hotel bar-ish. Well, I think it is a hotel. But it got that kind of vibe. And it was like, okay. I, and if it was based on the vibe I got from the actual bar itself it'd be like a c tier but i'm putting it on shite night because i went for an interview there and i worked in cocktail bartending for well maybe just over 10 well, maybe nine ten years i'm not gonna say i'm in a, the, the, the 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 biggest um i don't have the biggest knowledge on cocktails and definitely not um but i know my classics i do know how to make cocktails i know how to basically serve drinks, okay? That's my basic concept of it. 
with Hawksmoor, I went in for an interview and the woman came up to me and she had this really long chat with me about how the bar was great, how, how they were trying to be the best bar in Edinburgh and blah, 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 blah. And then she said, oh, I'm going to give you like, a, I'm just going to ask you how you make your classics. I said, cool, no problem. And she gave me the most random classics I have never heard of. I, I literally never heard of this. So she gave me one. I don't know the name of it, but apparently it was like a zombie, but with gin. So it had like the three different types of gin in it. I was like, well, what three different, three different types of gin do you get in it? And then she asked me um, how, how to make a white lady. So I gave her my specs for a white lady. She goes, well, I wouldn't really make it that way. I was like, well, how, how would you make it? And then she started giving me things like such as grapefruit juice and shit. And I was like, well, you're fucking wrong then. Um, and then there was another cocktail, I can't remember. But those two, those two cocktails, she asked me on. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? And she looked so disappointed when I didn't know about the fucking classic cocktail, which has got three different types of gin. Again, I can't name it because I don't know what it is. I still don't know what it is. And I, I know most cocktails, I would say, most classics. So it's going, it's going shite night. Sorry, a bit better, but okay. Element. Element. Um, element is going to go... C tier. I'm going to put below Lulu's. I'll put it here, I'll put it there. C tier, element, uh, it's okay. Quite cozy pub. I quite like that it's in the middle. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's just like your bang average pub. Like, you don't go there stay all night, but you might go there for a pint. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Rose Tavern. Is that Rose Tavern? Yeah. I wish I, I wish I got better pictures, but Rose Tavern. I'm gonna put in. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna put it above Element. Put it below the, Rose Tavern. I'm gonna put it there. Um, I've been there a couple of times. I went there to see the rugby with one of my old schoolmates. Actually, um, it's it's too small. It's too small. I think the bar is quite cool, but you can't stand at the bar because it's so busy all the time. Um, so Rose Tavern is gonna go there because I just don't. It's cool. It's a cool bar. Like as I said, I would go there for a pint. As I said, the C tier is like I would go there for a beer, but not all night. Shanghai nightclub, F tier. Uh, yeah, F tier. What was under? What did I F tier. Sh Shanghai. Not fucking with it. I I do like the boys who work there. Uh, Stephen and Robbie. They were great guys. I worked, I worked in Le Monde, which is part of the same group. Shanghai though is literally. Um, uh, it's just, uh, it's horrible. I, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> it was actually the first bar I went to when I first moved to Edinburgh, Shanghai. I saw that and I just Googled bars to go to and the first thing came up was Shanghai. And uh, I was like, okay, I'll go there. And uh, I had a terrible night. I was just standing in a corner, um, just just doing nothing, as I usually do, which you might be wanting to kill, that's what you do anyway. But it, it was just so awkward, it was just bad. It's just not a good nightclub. I think they, they probably will close that indefinitely because it's just... Ah, it's just not good. It's just not good. Um, but I do like the guys who work there um, because I know them, so... Bon Vivant. Hmm. I'm going to put you as a high C. I'm going to put the highest C. Bon Vivant is actually quite a cool pub. Um, again, it's kind of, we're getting like a bit of a vibe here of the, the Panda and Sons, Bon Vivant, Lucky Liquor. It's got that same, I think Bon Vivant is a little bit more highbrow. It's it's going there because, I can't see Gandhi Bullies, Jesus Christ. Um, again, nice drinks, quite expensive, but you don't go there just for like a drink, you just go there, let's go get a couple of gin and tonics. You have to kind of, it's more of a date place, you take your bird or your boyfriend or whoever. Whatever you're taking, <laughs> I say that one. So C tier for them. Candy bar. Ooh, candy bar, candy bar, candy bar, candy bar. I quite like candy bar. I'm gonna put candy bar right about in between there. I'm gonna put it right B tier. Um, candy bar is good. I, I don't mind it. It's cool. I, it's got that kind of back in the day again. It was definitely about. Young women, young girls, young hot girls, get them all in, working, get them all in, drinking, get them drunk, get, get them free drinks so then they can fuck about. Um, but yeah, Candy Bar is definitely, um, I quite like it, it's cool. The drinks are actually okay priced, I would say. Um, and, you know, it's 
conveniently located in town. Again, I mean, everyone who works there, I mean, they might be fucking clueless on to make drinks, but they're fucking attractive. So at least you've got something to look at, which is not important. Indigo Shard, Yard, okay. Indigo Yard. Um, fuck, I don't know. Uh, not dangerous, it's not dangerous. I'm gonna put it as a low C. I mean, I'd much rather go to these places. I don't want to go there. What's that? Dirty decks. Yeah. Put it in low C. Uh, Indigo Yard, it's, it's okay. I think Indigo Yard has that kind of like two face element to it. it you know, if you go there like a weekend or a busy night, it's, it's got that. It's, it's because of the clientele, really, it is. It, the clientele are all pretentious, fucking, you know, the kind of rugby wanks, the girls who all have daddy paying for their careers. Um, those kind of wanks. That's my experience. And I've been there a few times. I just that's the same shit I get every time I go there. I just can't be arsed with it. It's just not. But it's it's too expensive as well. You go there for a pint. It's like eight pounds. Nah, I like that side bit. That side bit's cool. But I just I, I'll drink there if I have to. But it's just not my vibe. Next one. Almost there, guys. We're almost there. This is taking too long. We're almost there. Gilly do. Gilly who? I used to love the gear I do. I used to go there all the fucking time after work when I worked in Amicus. But, 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 we're gonna put it. Where are we gonna put it? I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it in C tier. C tier is filling up. It's um, it's too touristy. It's it's a cool space. They got the upstairs is actually kind of cool. They used to have they used to have naked Kayleys there, by the way. So you go upstairs. They'd have like, all these like middle-aged people just dancing naked. Might get involved myself. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's again, it's too expensive. The, the, really ex the price has gone up so much. It's too touristy. There's too many people there who just they get fucked up for no reason. And it's like, nah, not my kind of vibe, mate. But I'm getting older now, so I guess I say. What's this one? Is that brand No. What is that? Oh, that's Kitty O'Shea's, sorry. It's just a building, but Kitty O'Shea's. Irish bar. Um, I've only been there once, maybe twice, pre-COVID. Um, I'm going to put it in C tier as well. Like, I don't know. I'm going to put it, yeah, there. I don't know it. I'll just put it, but no, I'm not going to put it Gilly Do. <laughs> right. I'll oh, fucking leave it. Right. Um, yeah, Kitty O'Shea's. I, it's just an Irish pub. That place has changed uh, venues so many times. Uh, I think I can name on one hand in the past year the names it's been under. Um, it's a very difficult space to, to kind of have a place, I think. So, but to have a good time. I think for an Irish pub, you think it'd be a bit more lively. Uh, it's, for me, it's just not my kind of scene again. I think for an Irish pub, it's too intimate. The pub, the, the, the bar itself is too small. You have to wait ages to get a fucking drink. Um, no. Go and see. It possibly could go in F, but but talking about F, this guy Bourbon. Um, bourbon will go as a high F. That's a compliment. Um, the reason why Bourbon actually used to be all right, I thought, um, as the predecessor of it. I can't remember the fucking name of it, but Bourbon was all right. It's just the clientele is just a bunch of kids. It's just a bunch of young kids. I think even people might listen to this. You you, you might be 21, 22. You might even think Bourbon's too young for you. Like I, it's literally you walk, you walk past it now, and it's just children. Um, I get it if you're someone who's younger, that might be a cool place to go, but not for me. Um, I did like it five years ago. Not five years, sorry, maybe eight years ago. Again, I can't remember the name of the place, but it was good then. Um, Bourbon, I've been there twice. Same layout as before, and just not my style. Again, it's a nightclub, so it's not my style. Le Monde, another place I used to work. Hmm. Le Monde. Um, this is difficult. See, I didn't really drink in Le Monde before I worked there. I drank there like once or twice. So for that, I can't really rate it that highly. But I did like working there. I do like the people who were there. Well, some of them. Hmm. I'm gonna put it as a low C. I can't put it in F, but it's better than the go yards. Dirty deck. Okay, well, can I do? 
I wouldn't drink there though, that's the thing. Okay, yeah, I, I'm rating this on I wouldn't drink there, so... Yeah, it's gonna go low C. I wouldn't drink there because it's too expensive, um, but I do like the layout of it. Um, yeah, it's a busy bar. This has been the busiest bar I worked in. It was actually kind of cool. That's why I like working there because it was busy, because you got absolutely slapped, but I'm talking about drinking there. There's a lot of attractive people that go there, but they're all kind of very plastic and Instagram and not my kind of vibe. Not my kind of vibe, huh? Copper Blossom, yeah, Copper Blossom. Um, oh God, I'm gonna put it as a high F, high F. Copper Blossom is, don't get me wrong, it's a nice place. Um, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just not my. It's just not. It's just. It's just a woman's bar. It's just a women's bar. It's just. You, you, you. If you go there, you're a woman, or you are um, emasculated as a man. Okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. No, no. Copper Co Blossom awesome has. It's it's kind. It's the kind of place. You take your mum out for a couple of drinks, maybe, and you you need to tell her something important. So you tell her that you're like the. So you go up to her and you tell her that you're like the one percent top earner on OnlyFans um, and then you've got to explain to her what OnlyFans is whilst you're giving her a bottle of £45 Prosecco and then you've got to finally reveal to her that you've got a fucking new boyfriend called Finley who is currently importing heroin from China and you're getting married next month in Gretna Green. That's the kind of place I'm getting from there. It's just somewhere you take your mum to give her some very disappointing news but to get her drunk whilst you're telling her that news. Uh, it's just not my kind of place, sorry. Hand over tap, next one. Uh, hand over tap, kind of cool, I like it. Um, I'm gonna put that as a B. B tier, I'm gonna put it, why is Lucky Lucky here? I'm, I'm gonna get a bit, Lucky Girl's going down. Gonna put it above there, uh, put, put it above the shack. And black cat, no, there. Uh, yeah, hand over tap, kind of cool. Um, don't like the clientele on the, like, the Mondays, whenever it is, but yeah, watch the football. I think the bar could be bigger. I think they could make the bar a little bit bigger, but other than that, no complaints. Pipe's pretty cheap. Let's do it. Lady Libertine. I've been there once for Ron's birthday, so I can't, again, be too objective about this. I do like the layout of it. I think it's actually quite a pretty place. Is it somewhere I'd go drinking? Probably not. I think it's more of like a dating place. You go somewhere, you take your birds or your girl, boyfriend or girlfriend or wife, husband, whatever, toaster. Um, I'm gonna give it a high C. I mean, I don't see myself drinking there, so I can't really hurry it too highly. But I don't have anything against it. So it's kind of like the same boat as Le Monde. I think it's just like I don't have anything against it. It's just I, I wouldn't go drinking there. But I did like Ron's birthday for the, the short amount of time I was <laughs> with him for that. Tiger Lily, Shy Night. <laughs> Shy Night. I'll put it top of Shy Night because of the prestige. But Tiger Lily is just not. My kind of place, no. Tiger Lily should be burnt down. Um, it's, it's basically a vessel for materialism and fakery. And I don't like it. It's just not, don't like it. I mean, you, you charge extortionate prices. The staff are good, the staff know what they're doing, but I, I literally would, Lulu's is literally keeping that place together for me. I know that Tiger Lily is like the, the forefront of it, but it's just if if I if I ever date a girl and she says I'm going to Tiger Lily, or I go to Tiger Lily, I will dump her on the spot. I don't care if I've married this bitch, and she says to me, you know where I'm going to celebrate my marriage, our marriage, sorry, because she's not selfish. I'll be like, where? She goes Tiger Lily. I'll be like, oh, bitch, divorce. It's done. It's over. That's how I feel about it. So strong. Bramble. <laughs> Again, it's just a picture of a. A tailor's, but it's a speakeasy, so you don't really know. Bramble, I'm gonna put in I, again. It's not somewhere I drink, but I have respect for it. So I'm gonna put it in with these kind of wanky bars here. I have high respect for it. I would go there for a drink, but it's not somewhere I would suggest to go. Simples. It's a nice bar. What's that? Is that the standing order? That is the standing order. Standing order. Standing order. What do you put the other about? I'm gonna put standing order in C. 
Because now you may, if you're all like bar hospitality based, you may go, oh, well, this means boo. But Standing Order is a beautiful building. The drinks are cheap. They're usually quite fast to serve them. I mean, you can't complain against a Kraken and Coke for two pound fifty. Yes, the clientele is pretty shocking. Um, I'm going to put it higher than. I won't put it higher than Le Monde. I, I feel I'll be doing an injustice to Le Monde there, but I'll put it in C tier. I would go there for a pint. I don't like the clientele. I wouldn't eat there, but yeah, it's 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 okay. It's not bad. Like it's it's fine. It does the job. I don't care if it's weather spoons. Like in a day, like every. If you think about an owner, Tim Martin is an arsehole, he's a Brexiteer, boo hoo hoo. But if you think of every owner, I mean, have you worked at a pub where you liked the owner? Very rarely. I think I've worked in several bars, I didn't even know the owner, or if I knew the owner, they were a bit of a dickhead. So, let's just put that into context, okay? Hoot the Redeemer. We're almost there, guys. We're almost done. This is taking way too long, by the way. <laughs> Hoot the Redeemer. I'm putting it up here. A tier. It's going up in A tier. It's going to go low A tier. Actually, I'll put it high B tier. Because it's not... I think it's a great starting place if you go there. It's got the popcorn. It's got a cool bar. You get to sit down. You get the ice cream. It's got the, the, the machines. It's got the, the puppet stand. Cool bar. Excellent bar. Really great. Love it. It's a speakeasy right next to Spella Italia. Love that. Um, it's just not somewhere, and this is the only criticism I have, is that it's not somewhere that you would spend all night at. You would go somewhere else afterwards, which is fine, it's fine, it's not a problem with. So I can't put it in like A or a banger because these places I can, well, Fantasy Palace I've never been to, but I can imagine being there all night. You know, these are places that I can imagine being all night in, having a good time. Um, so yeah, Hoot the Redeemer gets high praise from me. Soba! <laughs> Yes, so bad. <coughs> so bad. I used to work in Soba. This is one of the other ones I used to work at. Uh, I do drink in Soba. Now, what do I think about Soba? Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it a C. But... It's not. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'll give a. Yeah, I like going in there, 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 there. I'll I'll put it as a, I'll put it a mid tier C. The reason why is and if anyone's listening who works this over, I love you guys. I think you're all great. Okay, I think you're actually all fantastic. Soba is just not somewhere without the people I know there. I wouldn't drink there. It's just, I just wouldn't drink there. Um, I've had my conflicts with Soba before uh, when I used to work there internally. But it's just, it's just not somewhere that I would go for like a pint. Um, you know, you, I think there's definitely better places around. As I say, like you know, I've got 99 Grand Cru, um, East Side, Elios. I think there's better places to go for a drink. Um, and the only reason why I go to Soba is just to interact with people that I know there because I want to see them and I do like the people there. So I'm going to put it in a C tier. As I said, a C tier is just like, it's okay. It's just, it's not great. What's this one? TGI Fridays. Uh, F tier. I'll put it below a copper uh, TGI Fridays, again, somewhere I used to work. Um, I used to adore TGI Fridays. It used to be one of my favorite places ever. Um, and then you kind of leave it. I, I got fired actually for sexual harassment. Not like that. No, I said one joke. I said one joke, a really terrible joke. So I didn't get fired for actually doing anything. I said one joke. I said one joke, and I got fired for it uh, from a manager who was uh, spiteful of me. I, th I think. I don't know. I don't care. Um, so yeah, I used to love it. Um, it was one of the best places I've worked at. So you kind of get in this kind of cult. Um, imagine, you know, like um, um, a headset of TJ Fridays, think it's the best, but then you kind of leave it, you just kind of think, well, the drinks are really shit, like the beer is shit, the cocktails are shit, it's just pure sugar or everything. Um, so, yeah, it's going to FTR, you, you don't go there, you spend a lot of money, uh, the food is really not like it either. FTR for me, sorry, sorry, guys. 
Fry Gaze. <laughs> Boozy Cow. Another place I used to work. Well, Amicus Apple was. So I didn't work at Boozy Cow. Boozy Cow. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to put it with Soba. I'm going to put it above Soba just. Again, Boozy Cow. Amicus Apple was amazing to work at. I think they did a bit of an injustice changing it to Boozy Cow. I think it's because obviously food makes more money than booze. So that's why they kind of focus on food. You'll, you'll find that with any bar or restaurant you work in, you'll notice that food makes more money than booze and is a lot more, a lot less wasteful uh, because you know, how much you, you pay a chef, a couple of chefs, and they don't waste that much food. But you know, bars, you waste a lot more drink. Drink is a lot more expensive. Food, you can buy you know, some bread and meat for a pound and sell it for eight pounds. So the markup is a lot more on food. And so that's why they changed it. Boozy Cow, it's not the same vibe as Amicus. Amicus was amazing. It was incredible. Um, yeah, it goes to sea. I'm just not. I would go there for a beer, definitely. I think I could stay there for a couple of beers, but I just wouldn't spend all night there. Tonic. Ooh, tonic, 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 tonic. Fuck. Controversial tonic. I, I know tonic. I... I know I absolutely have to hate this place. I do. I really know that I absolutely have to fucking hate everything about this place. But it's so fucking good. It's amazing. Tonic is incredible. I think Tonic is probably the best cocktail bar in Newtown Edinburgh. Maybe possibly. I'm not going to say the best. I'm saying it's one of the top ones there. So I'm going to give it... I'm not going to put it above these guys. I'm not going to put it in Banger. But it is, it is so good. It just it has this kind of mix and mash of prestige and edginess. They know what they're doing. They compliment their bartenders. The bartender vibe is good there. It's it's really small and intimate, but it's also kind of very distant as well. So you can stand at the bar, you can sit at a table, you can go outside. It's it's all, it's perfect. It's actually perfect as a location, as a cocktail bar. I mean, the only the only downside I would say is again the clientele. The clientele are, a lot of them are wanky, and a lot of them will stream over from Tiger Lily into Tonic. I don't like that, um, and I think sometimes they can be a little bit up themselves, and that's why I would say I, I I would want to hate them, but you can't hate them. They are just you know that they're superior at what they're doing. You know that they're just good at what they do, and you have to put them there. You have to. Um, you know, I'm sorry, but that's. It is what it is. Um, and lastly, why not? Oh, go, why not? Fuck. Um, I guess that's going to go into. The... Eh. You know what? I'm going to put it as low C tier. Um, the reason why, I don't judge me for this. I don't go there. I have not been there in my fucking years. But. Oh, the music's going. No. Just go. <laughs> How, how long has this gone on for? But don't judge me. It's gone for you. I mean, it is it is like the best nightclub on Utah, I think. It's got a cool open out, out, outdoor space, which I liked about it. The drinks are shit. It's a nightclub. What do you expect? You know, it's a lot of young people. What do you expect? I think it just... It, it, it's almost an F tier. It's a very low C tier. Like, I, I would never go there. So, actually, you know, we'll go in F tier. We'll go high F tier, because I would never go there. But I think out of these three, it's the better one. Lulu's, I would I would go to Lulu's still now if I was highly convinced. If someone's like, I've got a party here, I've got everything booked, you're on it, I would go. Why not? No. Okay, we're done. We've we done it. Yes, we've done it. Okay, so. What do you think? Do you agree with me on this at all? I mean, we've got a lot in the seat here. I mean, I'm being quite kind of devil's advocate here. Gary Bolly's at the top, obviously. Bangers, Nightcap, and Fantasy Palace. Never been to Fantasy Palace, but Nightcap is the banger. Only one banger, really. And then you've got the Shite Knights and Fs there. So what do you think? Let me know uh, down below. Now, it is a Friday night, so we have here, I think, 52 bars or something like that. As I said, it's a, it's a, it's a Friday night. So I'm going to go for a beer tonight. And we've got here 1 to 52. I'm going to generate a random number. And I have to go to that bar tonight. 
whichever number it comes up with. And we're going to do from descending order. So from the top, it was um, Garibaldi is obviously number one, and then Nightcap, and then Fancy Pass number two and three. Okay? So here we go. Let's have a look. 42. Fuck. Is there actually 42? 1, 2, 3, 7, 10, 13, 17, 20, 5, 7, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42. The Wally Dug. Oh, for fuck's sake, that's miles away. Oh, it's an F tier. Oh. <laughs> Okay, guys, so I mean, I need to go to. I, I, I hate that when people call guys. Okay, everyone. I need to go to the Wally Dogs tonight for a pint. Yay! Oh, fuck. Why is that happening? What is going on? Wally Dog. God damn it. That is literally the worst shit. Ugh. Okay, well we'll, well, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. I'll go to the Wally Dog. Get an Uber to Wally Dog. Um, and that's it. That's my that's my opinion on the uh, the pubs there, guys. Uh, thanks so much for um, listening at the moment. Um, I need to rate this beer. Um, I do not like it. The, the vanilla is too off putting. Uh, so we're going to give it for the Dry Gate American Hot Vanilla Shake IPA podcast beer. We're going to give it a twenty three out of sixty nine. It's just the vanilla is just too much on that. Um. Yeah, and we'll leave it there. So, thank you so much for listening. Um, as I said, so the next episode will be out on the 10th of October. That'll be the anniversary. Um, and I'll be talking about what we're going to do with this going forwards. Um, Duncan is going to come back very soon. Um, he's going to be doing something in Gorgi where he probably will get stabbed. So, look out for that. Um, I thank you so much for listening at the moment. It's really great that I, uh, everyone. I say everyone, all one of you is listening at the moment. I really do appreciate you uh, listening to me rambling on for this uh, over an hour now. This is too long. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the worst podcast in the world, as said by Julaine Maxwell. And I will see you all later. And I might see you in the Wally Dug if you're on there. <laughs> okay, see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>